Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. We have another smashing prismatic build to showcase today, but requires a bit of grinding to achieve. If any of you here has completed the dual destiny mission to get the new exotic class bond, then congrats, as you have now unlocked one of the most unique exotics in game. Why is this unique? Well, because you get random exotic perks from all three classes in game. For example, I have Spear of Inmost Light and Spear of Cryotech, which is basically a mini Heart of Inmost Light exotic for my hunter. And this right here is why you should get one as well, as adding the new Cost of Wolf exotic as well can allow your prismatic form to stay active for a lot more longer with this neat little trick. I mean it, you can have a crazy uptime via your prismatic form and exotic combo. So if you have the exotic pairing already, let me show you how busted this really is. Let's start with the exotic of the build and general aim. Our aim is to make sure our key abilities always stay active and available at the moment's notice. We also need to make sure we utilize our prismatic form as often as possible, as this alone will enhance our class exotic further. For this, we will be using Vitalism and Kvostov exotic weapon. Starting with Kvostov, with his exotic trait, the right choice, it states, Every 7th bullet from the weapon deals additional damage and ricochets to nearby targets. Since we will be using mods that require orbs of power to work, I have decided that adding the following best suits the build for the user, although having the legendary variant is also viable. Pairing this with Facet of Grace is also what will lead us to having a fantastic and faster prismatic regeneration rate, so this can benefit us a lot as long as we are collecting orbs of power and using this constantly. Our second exotic is called Revitalism, with its two exotic traits. Spirit of Inmost Light, where using your ability empowers the other two abilities, granting them increased regeneration. And Spirit of Cry Attack, where gaining with a Mel when you use your grenades. Both of these perks benefit each other no matter what you do, so having this on hand is probably the best mini Inmost Light exotic the hunters will ever get close to. On top of that, this can work with whatever elemental subclass build you desire to go with, so basically you have endless customizations at your fingertips. For aspects and fragments, we have the following. Gunpowder Gamble, where getting ability to heals, elemental debuffs, or solo weapon kills, will charge up an improvised explosive. Frederick Spectre, where activating your class ability leaves behind a strand decoy that distracts nearby combatants. Facet of Grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapons grants you bonus transcendent energy. Facet of Protection, where while surrounded by combatants, you are more resistant to incoming damage. Facet of Balance, where rapidly defeating targets with light damage grants melee energy. Doing the same with darkness damage grants grenade energy. Facet of Purpose, where collecting orbs of power grants a wide number of personal elemental buffs that varies. Facet of Hope, where while having an element buff, your class ability recharges faster. And Facet of Justice, where while transcendent, your ability from the blows explodes. The fragments will break up into two areas, with one area focusing on prismatic regeneration, and the other for ability regeneration. Having Facet of Grace and Justice will be for prismatic usage, and will hold a lot of weight when being combined with our exotics. Facet of Protection is ideal for the extra damage reduction and general protection for the user, and a facet of balance and hope will focus on personal abilities buff, which is generally good to have. Now I can see facet of awakening also being useful if you want to swap hope out instead, although if your build focuses heavily on orbs of power usage, then the following is best kept how it is. For the mods and stats, we have both resilience and discipline marked as our top priority, with mobility and strength also supporting their parts. Both mobility and strength don't need to be invested much here, as we do have key mods and fragments to help them out. Also, following the key abilities they have, and using the following class item type shown, will greatly help the build from start to finish. Resilience, we have ours at tier 9 for a 27% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having faster protection will fill in the missing gap for not being tier 10. But having the Cogressive Dantner mod will help you out big time with how crazy the effects slash damage and general splash damage in game has become. A Discipline will have ours at tier 10 for a 53 second cooldown via Dustfield Grenades. Now there are a number of grenades to select for the stat, so don't feel like you need to have Dustfield in hand. I chose it, as it can take out a wide number of enemies in one go, and works well with my class item being used. I don't recommend you add the kickstart mods, as the cooldowns are already quite high and are already quite good as to where they are now. 
However, having these mods aimed towards your class armor will be very helpful down the line. Bolstering Detonation for a 12% class ability recharge. Momentum Transfer for a 12% mini recharge. Impact Induction for a 12% grenade recharge. Absolution for a 5% all ability cooldown. Distribution for a 4% all ability cooldown. And Outreach for a 12% mini cooldown. Just having these will be enough for the build overall. Additional mods which are highly recommended, we have the following. Connect Siphon for creating loads of power. Charged up times 1 for plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. Connect Weapon Surge for a 10% weapon buff. Dynamo for a 2.5% super energy regen. And then lastly, Heavy Reserves and Scavenger ammo mods for a heavy weapon. So as we have covered our exotic primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon for the build. These are all optional. Having the Indebted Kindness with AGO and Beacon Downs will be helpful with dealing with the vastly powerful enemies and many bosses you may come across. Its damage is exceptionally well and requires no buff to make it further more stronger. And on top of that, it's great for being used against champions and quickly dwindling the health. If you want something more regenerated certain abilities, then by all means go for it, but the build feels pretty complete at the current moment it is in. Heavy, we have Quilliam's Terminus with King Tally and Dynamic Sway Reduction. A suitable and hard hitting heavy that matches my super damage type, and it makes it easier to carry additional reserve mods. Although a heavy version with Chill Clip will be better for the long run, it will depend on the encounter you play in, plus where you can see it best fit in. Honestly, machine guns this season are quite good for a number of activities, and you should use them as much as possible compared to just rocket launchers all the time. Now, we have done many hunter builds in the past before, but nothing like this, which is near on par with the Titan Heart of Imus Light Exotic. For us to get near that level, we would have to make full use of our abilities and use exotics that would greatly regenerate certain key stats to greatly benefit us. With the new class item available, not only can we do some crazy builds down the line, but we can also craft some unique versions that make the hunter more flexible in this field. This sort of build is going to be good for generally all content in mind, because of its nature to focus on regenerating all abilities one after another. Using this in PvP or endgame PvE, it's going to be an option for players who don't use much different builds in game, but do like to use the builds that can be flexible in all types of content and activities, no matter the light level, or difficulty involved. And of course, there are going to be much more stronger builds out there that can easily overpower the building and number of content. However, its flexible nature and ease of use is something I would say allows players to play and experiment with the build as much as they like and still get the same results. If you haven't got any classes like just of yet, I would highly recommend you try and grab one or at least try and get one that is similar to what the build shows. Because quite honestly, this is the type of build you would like to take with you from start to finish for whatever content you have in mind, from PvE, PvE, raids, strikes, you name it. It's a pretty good and flexible build. So there we have it. I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below. While if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and sub while you're here. A dim link for the build is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.